Asher Taylor Dawson, a dancer in the Inamorati cast of Lee Prittle Ballet Company's upcoming production, Circus of Worldly Wonders. But I'm also a performer both on the ground and in the air with a local circus company in my area, which is Louisville, Kentucky, called Cirque Louis. Now, a lot of us have seen a lot of ballet, and a lot of us have seen a lot of circus, and a lot of us probably even know that many circus performers have years of ballet training that go into their preparation to work for big companies like Cirque du Soleil and smaller companies like Cirque Louis. What a lot of us don't know is that ballet and circus share a closely intertwined history. In its very beginnings, ballet originated as Italian courtly dance, which was then adopted into the court of King Louis XIV's Sun King, where it began to be codified as a performing art. Now back in its very earliest days, it wasn't performed as it is now on a proscenium stage where there's a nice big square around everyone, or shall we say, say Royal Albert Hall, maybe a round stage where you're sitting you know, on all sides. Instead, it would have been outdoors with horses and elephants or in a big ballroom. Um, and it was not only professional performers who danced, but also kings, noblemen. Unfortunately, women weren't permitted in the very beginning but I feel like we've kind of rectified that imbalance since then. Um, and it was very refined and restrained, so we didn't see legs for men above 90 degrees, or probably in the very beginning, even above 45 degrees. Certainly when women were first introduced, they had long skirts, they didn't lift their legs above 45 degrees because goodness, you know, heaven forbid we should see a calf. Um, it was all very buttoned down and very restrained. Yeah, it was courtly. Um, but as it evolved into a performing art where you would be seeing it on a proscenium stage like you would see an opera, influences began to creep in from other elements. Now, one of the major influences was, in fact, the tradition of acrobatic performance that was right throughout, th throughout Europe. There were families of acrobatic performers that would travel around Europe performing in street fairs, performing at festivals, performing in courts, um, and they were some of the original influences that created circus as we know it today, both the Cirque du Soleil stream and the more Barnum and Bailey kind of stream, but they were also eventually integrated into the classical ballet. Early on, when these more acrobatic influences began to come in, there was actually a lot of conflict. So Jennifer Holmans, in her book, Apollo's Angels, A History of Ballet, highly recommend it, good read, talks about how in the beginning, actually a lot of, a lot of these sort of ballet establishment didn't want these big acrobatic movements. They didn't want big jumps and leaps and, you know, partnering with huge lifts. It was too much. They wanted restrained. But you and I probably know how everyone else felt about it. Crowds love that stuff. Audiences eat it up. I love watching it. I love doing it. So over time, these bigger, more dynamic movements that came from these families of dancers who originated in the acrobatic world became part of the canon. Even today, you can see some direct parallels. So one of my favorite lifts, and actually the first one I learned, besides just, you know, boop, is in the ballet world called Bluebird Lift. So I learned it first in ballet, and one day I was taking partner acro training, um, and we did what was called shoulder bird lift, or just shoulder lift. And in the middle of it, I realized, no, no wait a minute, this is just Bluebird Lift. Um, and it turns out that, I'm sorry, they're the same lift. Um, that's one of the holdovers that's continued to appear both in ballet and in circus contexts. So today we'll be taking a look at bluebird lift slash shoulderbird as it might be done in a ballet context and as you might see it in a circus context. Um, there's a little bit of a different approach to how you finish it and show it off, 
but really it's the same thing. And the same can be said for a lot of the, the big jumps. And even now, we still have some influence coming in from the world of acrobatics and gymnastics and circus. So jumps like 540 that I'm now learning in men's class, we didn't learn it when I was a kid because it just wasn't really something that you did in ballet a lot, I guess, when I was younger. Um, have been, have continued to be interpolated into the canon of classical ballet technique. So let's go ahead over to the studio and check out Bluebird slash Shoulder Lift and see what it looks like. This is my partner, Carter Webb. We've worked together in a service capacity quite a bit, and we will be demonstrating two versions of the same lift. One that we've already talked about in a ballet context, Bluebird Lift. In a service context, it's usually called either Shoulder Bird or Shoulder Lift. And the main difference is how you get into and out of it. Though you may see both versions in either context, because really, essentially, it's the same thing. And they work the same way whether you're the lifter or the lifty. Right? Yeah, so first we're going to show you the circus version of this, which we usually call shoulder bird or the shoulder lift. And it shows up in partner acro, in uh, adagio, and in group acro. Probably in some other contexts. Um, and in this version, sometimes your partner will run in and you'll grab, grab and throw them on your shoulder. We're just going to do it from a static entry point. So she's going to stand, Carter's going to stand next to my shoulder. I'm going to run my own her. And I'm going to count her in five, six, on seven. She's going to fall back and fold up a little bit. Now eight, I'm just going to roll over right into my shoulder. Then I'll step down, come to one knee, bring her to a handstand, and she will come to love. All right, here we go. This is the shoulder. Five, six, seven, eight. Cavalier and the Sugar Plum Fairy are the dancers. Um, in this version, I will give her my palm up. She's going to press down into my palm, come to attitude de vent. She begins to fall back, catch her, swing her, and puff her up onto my shoulder. I take her for a little walk. So that's another version of Bluebird Lift. It happens to be like one of my favorite ways of entry. I think this is the third time everyone yeah. has done that one. The first time was about 20 minutes ago. So many thanks to my beautiful partner, Carter Webb, and thank you for joining us for this exploration of the intertwining history of circus and ballet.